I'd now like to discuss the parameters and how we're going to set your machines up. So we're going to click the parameter setting. If I go across, I'm going to start off with the crown first. So I'm going to double click on the crown. And as you can see, we have no presets. It has factory settings which we cannot edit. So we're going to add a preset and instead of factory settings I'm going to put in and you can have this for whatever person that is using it so I'm just going to put it in as Dr. Fox and then we'll go through and discuss the settings that I I personally use that I think work pretty well. Now parameters and settings every doctor can formulate these to make their restorations fit to their specifications. These are just starting areas that will get you uh, going in the right directions. Now spacer, as you can see, as I use the slide bar and go back and forth, this is die spacer. And what I found is for what I use and for the cement that I use, which is Iva Clark's multi-link, it's very thin. So I set this to approximately 100 microns. Occlusal milling offset, what this does is it removes or adds porcelain in the milling chamber, but it really doesn't tell you that it's doing it. And this was more for the red camera because of the noise that it has. So the recommendations for this is to set it at zero. And this comes from one of the developers of the software. Proximal contact strength, I normally leave the default factory setting of 25 because as you'll see as we go along, we'll adjust the contact strength for each restoration. Occlusal contact strength. Now this, because it doesn't take into effect the periodontal ligament, what I normally do with this is I'll set this to minus 150 because the compression of the periodontal ligament is about 75 microns on both the top and the bottom. Dynamic contact strength. This helps get rid of interferences. So as you can see, we can uh, set this also, and I'm going to set this for minus 100. Minimal thickness radial. I'm going to turn this, and we're going to turn this up to about 800 microns. Ivoclar recommends that you try to get at least a millimeter of axial wall above the height of contour. So that will give us in that ballpark. The minimal thickness occlusal, they're very insistent that even though it's very strong, we need to do 1500 microns over cusp tips and the central fissure line. In order to get that, because we also have 100 microns of spacer and it's measured from the tooth to the top and it doesn't take into account the spacer, we're gonna set this to 1600. Margin thickness. What this does, as you can see as I slide this, it adds porcelain 90 degrees to the angle. So this is not an overhang as much as a catch. And I normally set mine at about 70 because you really can't feel it. And that's about the largest chip that they've seen when they're milling Emax CAD was a 70 micron chip. So this may take care of those chips. With the new algorithms they use to mill, you won't see as much chipping with this. Once you're done with this, I then want you to click the star and now this is going to be your default settings for crowns. I'm going to hit OK and then we're going to go back and I'm going to do for inlays and onlays. Now, you can see we have Dr. Lee is in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add another, and I'll put in Dr. Fox. Again, spacer, I'm going to set to 100 microns. Marginal adhesive gap is how much of the gap, which I believe this is the first 14 microns, allows the cement to get out. And because I use a thin cement, I normally turn this down 
to about 40 microns. Now, if it won't seat or you're seeing it's getting a rebound, you can move it up to 60 or 80, whatever you think is necessary. But I'm going to start mine at 40 because I use a very thin cement, which is Liva Clars Multilink. Occlusal milling offset. I'm going to set that to zero, just like we explained before. This is either adds or takes porcelain away. So it either does not take as much porcelain away or it takes more. So I'm going to set that to zero. Proximal contact strength, I'm going to leave it 25. Clusal contact strength, I'm going to set to minus 150. Dynamic contact strength, I'm going to turn that to minus 100. So these are the same settings as we had for the crowns. Minimal thickness radial, again I'm going to turn that to 800. And minimal thickness for occlusal, which is more important, we're going to go to 1600. And then margin thickness, I'm going to increase this to 70. And this will only be where it's not on a interproximal margin. Once I'm finished with that, I'm going to again hit the default sign and then I'm going to hit OK. We'll go backwards. Now we're going to do a veneer. And veneer, I'm going to again go to a, instead of doing a factory setting, I'm going to do Dr. Fox. And spacer, because we're using a veneer, I turn this down to about 60 to 70 microns. I'm going to go down to 70. Veneer thickness, I like to make it as thin as I can. Occlusal milling offset, zero. And margin thickness, because I make these thinner, I'll turn this up to 100 and then be able to polish back if there's anything that I can feel with my Explorer. Very easy to do. I'm going to again set this as my favorite and then hit OK. Go backwards. Pontic Anatomic. We're going to again add my favorite settings. And Proximal Contact Strength. I turn this up as far as it'll go. This will help with the thickness of the connectors. Occlusal Contact Strength. I do the same thing. Minus 150. And Gingival Spacing. This is if you want it off or below. So if you want to touch the margin, you set it to zero. If you want a little bit of pressure on it. And I personally put about 100 microns of pressure. And that usually won't uh, cause any seating problems. So I'm going to hit that again as the favorite. And then hit OK. And I'm going to go backwards. Abutment. Anatomic, this is a little bit farther than what we really need to go because you're only doing posteriors, but for right now we'll just talk a little bit about this. Clusal milling offset, um, again I'm going to add my parameters that I use for this. Clusal milling offset is zero. Proximal contact strength, because this is an abutment, there really isn't any. If you do a screw retained abutment like this one, then we'll set it to 25. Occlusal contact strength, we're going to set this to the minus 150. And actually I'm going to go to minus 175 because I like my implants to be just a little bit lighter out of occlusion. Dynamic contact strength, I still set this one to minus 100. Gingival depth is how far below the gingival tissues do I want this to go? And this is when we go to split these at a later time. You'll see that. I normally leave mine at zero. Gingival placement pressure. How much pressure do we want on gingival tissues? And I personally put in 100, and this just helps prevent food from getting trapped. Minimal thickness for radial and minimal thickness occlusal. You can see it's got a lock. So I'm going to unlock this to override it. Minimal thickness radial. 
500 is the optimum, so I'm going to go about 600, 700. And then minimal thickness occlusal, manufacturer's default is 2400. So this is what's recommended by Ivaclar. I'm going to then hit the default button and then hit OK. And then I'm going to go backwards and we're going to do abutment multi-layer framework. Okay, this is the framework underneath. And again, I'm going to add presets and I'm going to say And then for my gingival depth, I personally like this set at zero. I don't like to go below the gingival tissues. Gingival placement pressure, I'm going to put 100 microns. Shoulder width, I'm going to go down to about 600. Uh, as you, the wider you get, the, the little bit more difficult it is to match these. So I'm going to go to 800. Telescopic, telescopic angle is seven degrees. Minimal thickness radial. Again, this is manufacturer's recommendation. And I go up to about 600 on that. And then minimal thickness occlusal. They want 2400s. Again, this is just the minimum amount that will show. So I'm going to click that as default. And then I'm going to also hit OK. We'll go backwards. I'm going to do abutment crown. This is the veneering structure, so this is the over the top of my abutment. So I'm going to go into and add my own spacer. Again, I like to have about 100. Zero occlusal milling offset. Proximal contact strength. You can see all these are about the same, except again, because this is an implant, I'm going to go to minus 175 for occlusal contact strength. Stay at minus 100 for dynamic. Minimal thickness radial, 600, and minimal thickness occlusal. I'm going to do the 1600 again. Again, all of these are just in order to keep this material from fracturing. And we're going to hit the default and then OK. Then I'm going to go back. Articulation. What articulation does? This is a average based articulator. And as you can see, if you wanted to change any of these, you can change this as if it was a fully adjustable articulator. And most of the time, I just leave everything as default, unless for some reason you do get a scan of a patient with a new uh, Galileos input, you can make this an actual patient type virtual patient. So include the restoration for the articulation on function. You can either turn that on or off. We're going to turn that on. Okay. And then we're going to, now you can see that this is not anything that we can set. This is set for everyone. So we're going to hit OK. I'll go backwards. Preparation analysis. Right now, this is, all this is saying how far away you are from the opposing tooth. So you can see that you can move this within their tolerance range, which is two millimeters. So if you want to say, I, I want it at least that two millimeters away, I'm going to set it to zero. Then I'm going to hit OK. And we'll go back. And then the CIRAC guide, again, all these parameters are going to be the thicknesses for the guides. And you'll only be using this if you're going to mill a CIRAC guide. Okay, so we're going to go back, and the one comment that I am going to say about this is if you ask six instructors what their 
parameter settings are, all six of them will probably give you something different. Main thing is remember that if your occlusion is too high, you can adjust it in the interocclusal contact. So again, if I went to crowns, I could adjust this occlusal contact strength. If it's too high, I can set this to minus 175. If it's too low, I can set it to minus 125. This is how you dial these machines in so you'll get a perfect fit.